Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Okay, so let's take a look at how difficult it is to spin up a cloud shell. First, you're going to need to find this button up here that says activate cloud shell. And then you're going to have to wait. Yeah, it's really that simple. So once you create your first cloud shell, it's going to take a little bit and it's going to provision you a virtual machine into the background. This is a virtual machine that's going to be connected up to your account and set up using the credentials that you're logged into inside of the browser. Now sometimes the first cloud shell can take a little while to provision, so we'll use the magic of video editing to jump forward to where it's done. Okay, and there you have it. I'm connected. So there's a few things that you should definitely start to understand about this. Mostly that this is just like having an SSH terminal. Now, if you don't necessarily know what SSH is, no biggie. Let me tell you what it is. It's the way that we connect to a server through the command or to the server's command line. So this is most often done on Linux. So you'll connect to a Linux server and then you'll have a ability to run commands on that server. So in this case, what Cloud Shell has done is create a Linux server for us, connected us to it through SSH, and on here we have the ability to install anything we need. We can also run any of the gcloud commands that we'll be learning in the next video. So while we won't get into that much further here, I would like to just show you a few things. So for those of you familiar with Linux, this will be very old hat for you. For those of you not familiar with Linux, don't worry about it. It's very similar to either Mac or Windows command line usage. However, some of the commands will differ greatly from your known Windows counterparts. However, that's really far beyond the scope of this course. We're sticking to really the Google Cloud platform and not necessarily the underlying Linux operating system. That said, I will definitely be teaching you guys a few commands here. So what I would like to show you here is just a very basic command that will list the types of disks that we can provision if we were to create a virtual machine. So if you remember back to our security video, we had something like compute.instances.list, and that would list all of the instances that were available inside of the Google Compute area. Google has really thought of us when they were designing their security and their command line. Any command that has a security representation also has a command representation. And they're very easy to remember how they call each other because they're identical. You just drop the periods and replace them with spaces. So for instance, if we had something like compute.disk-types.list, the way we would turn that into a gcloud command is to take all of these and drop them for spaces and then put the word gcloud in front of it. And then if we run this command, and here we have it, we actually have an error now. However, the command was accurate. So let's take a look at what's happening here. So it's telling us that our project actually doesn't have the Compute Engine API set up, and that we can actually just click on this to enable it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in a separate tab here, and it's gonna take me to the API console for the Compute Engine, and you'll notice it is definitely not enabled. So if you remember from our other videos, it's as simple as clicking enable and then waiting for it to become ready. So with the magic of video editing, we'll jump to that moment. Okay, and here we go. It's now enabled and ready to go. So if we go back to our first tab where we have this command, I'm going to push the up arrow, which simply recalls the last command. This is common on Linux. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and we will see how it does. This time you'll notice that it's returned a lot of results. In this case, it's showing us all of the different disk types and their identifiers, regions, and size ranges that are available to us. So looking at each and every one of these would mostly be left up to a computer algorithm. So this is probably where you would be using the SDK to call this kind of a command and not necessarily the command line. But really, that's not what this video is about. What it's about is that you can now take a security permission and turn it into a command. Now, we're gonna take a deeper look at gcloud here 
in the next video. But in this one, I want you to understand that this Cloud Shell is a Linux server that you can type commands on and that gcloud is a command line tool that is installed on there and you can use that to make changes to your farm or make requests of your farm. So the most important thing to understand about Cloud Shell is that it's a Linux server that was spun up for you for the express purpose of running commands against the gcloud command line tool and that the command line tool is not the same thing as Cloud Shell. Yes, they are working together here. However, you can have gcloud installed on your local computer and configured there to work with your farm as well. This will be preferable to a lot of users. I'll be using Cloud Shell because it's very convenient and it's very available. All you have to do is click this button and you're there. So for the rest of this video, I'll be using Cloud Shell but in the next video, I'll show you how to install it on your actual command line. And as we move forward, you can feel free to use whichever methodology you prefer. The commands will be the same, and so will the structure. The last thing I'd like to show you is that you can actually take this Linux environment that they've provided you and add different tools to it that might make your job easier. In fact, you can even edit the template in which your cloud shells are created from. So if you always find yourself installing the same tools so that cloud shell is more usable for you, you can just adjust that template and then every time it fires up, you'll have that environment set up and ready to go inside of your virtual machine. And for those of you familiar with Linux, it's as easy as saying sudo apt install and then whatever package name that you want that would normally be installed on a Debian server. For those of you not familiar with Linux, this is a very advanced concept that you won't need to have access to to get a lot done in the cloud. However, it's kind of a neat power tip for you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.